at seven, Bibin Babu's servant came and announced that said Giridhari Prasad had come, a rich businessman and a VIP, this Giridhari Prasad. And he had come by appointment. But Bibin Babu was feeling so low that he had to tell his servant that it was not possible for him to leave his bed. To hell with VIPs. At 7.30 the servant came again. Vipin Babu had dozed off and was in the middle of an unpleasant dream when the servant's knock woke him up. Who was it this time? Chuni Babu sir says it's very urgent. Vipin Babu knew what the urgency was. Chuni Lal was a childhood friend of his. He had fallen on bad times recently and had been pestering Bipin Babu for a job. Bipin Babu had kept fobbing him off, but Chunilal kept coming back. What a persistent bore! Bipin Babu sent word that not only was it not possible for him to see Chuni now, but not in several weeks as well. But as soon as the servant stepped out of the room, it struck Bipin Babu that Chuni might remember something about 58 trip. There was no harm in asking him. He sped downstairs. Chuni had got up to leave. Seeing Bipin Babu, he turned around with a flicker of hope in his eyes. Bipin Babu didn't beat about the bush. Listen Chuni, I want to ask you something. You have a good memory and you have been seeing me off and on for a long time. Just throw your mind back and tell me, did I go to Rachi in 58? Chuni said, 58. It must have been 58. Or was it 1959? You are sure that I did go to Rachi? Chuni's look of amazement was not unmixed with worry. Do you mean you have doubts about having gone at all? Did I go? Do you remember clearly? Chuni was standing up. He now sat down on the sofa, fixed Bipin Babu with a long, hard stare and said, Bipin, have you taken to drugs or something? As far as I know, you had a clean record where such things were concerned. I know that old friendships don't mean much to you, but at least you had a good memory. You can't really mean that you have forgotten about the Rachi trip. Bipin Babu had to turn away from Chuni's incredulous stare. Do you remember what my last job was? Asked Chunilal. Yes, uh, of course. You worked in a travel agency. You remember that. And you don't remember that it was I who fixed up your booking for Rachi. I went to the station to see you off. One of the fans in your compartment was not working. I got an electrician to fix it. Have you forgotten everything? Whatever is the matter with you, you don't look too well, you know? Bipin Babu sighed and shook his head. I have been working too hard, he said at last. That must be the reason. Must see about consulting a specialist. Doubtless. It was Bipin Babu's condition which made Chunila leave without mentioning anything about a job. Parish Chanda was a young physician with a pair of bright eyes and a sharp nose. He became thoughtful when he heard about Bipin Babu's symptoms. Look, Dr. Chanda, said Bipin Babu desperately, you must cure me of this horrible illness. I can't tell you how it's affecting my work. There are so many kinds of drugs these days. Isn't there something specific for such a complaint? I can have it sent from abroad if it's not to be had here. But I must be rid of these symptoms. Dr. Chanda shook his head. You know what, Mr. Choudhury? He said. I've never had to deal with a case such as yours. Frankly, this is quite outside my field of experience. But I have one suggestion. I don't know if it will work, but it's worth a try. It can do no harm. 
Bipin Babu leaned forward anxiously. As far as I can make out, said Dr. Chandra, and I think you are of the same opinion. You have been to Rachi, but due to some unknown reason, the entire episode has slipped out of your mind. What I suggest uh, is that you go to Rachi once again. The sight of the place may remind you of your trip. This is not impossible, I think. More than that, I cannot do at the moment. Okay, I am prescribing a nerve tonic and a tranquilizer. Sleep is essential or the symptoms will get more pronounced. Here it is. It may have been the sleeping pin and the advice the doctor gave which made Bipin Babu feel somewhat better the next morning. After breakfast, he rang up his office gave some instructions and then procured a first-class ticket to Rachi for the same evening. Getting off the train at Rachi next morning, he realized at once that he had never been there before. He came out of the station, hired a taxi and drove around the town for a while. It was clear that the streets, the buildings, the hotels, the bazaars, the Moravadi Hill were all unfamiliar. With none of this had he the slightest acquaintance. Would a trip to the Hudru Falls help? He didn't believe so. But at the same time, he didn't wish to leave with the feeling that he hadn't tried hard enough. So he arranged for a car and left for Hudru in the afternoon. At 5 o'clock the same afternoon in Hudru, two Gujarati gentlemen from a group of picnickers discovered Bipin Babu lying unconscious beside a boulder. When the ministrations of the two gentlemen brought him around, the first thing Bipin Babu said was, I'm finished. There's no hope left. Next morning, Bipin Babu was back in Calcutta. He realized that there was truly no hope for him. Soon he would lose everything, his will to work, his confidence, his ability, his balance of mind. Was he going to end up in the asylum at Rachi? Bibin Babu couldn't think anymore. Back home, he rang up Dr. Chanda and asked him to come over. Then after a shower, he got into bed with an ice pack clamped to his head. Just then, the servant brought him a letter which someone had left in the letter box. A greenish envelope with his name in red ink on it. Above the name, it said, Urgent and Confidential. In spite of his condition, Bipin Babu had a feeling that he ought to go through the letter. He tore open the envelope and took out the letter. This is what he read. Dear Bipin, I had no idea that a friend would bring about the kind of change in you that it has done. Was it so difficult for you to help out an old friend down on his luck? I have no money, so my resources are limited. What I have is imagination, a part of which I used in retribution of your unfeeling behavior. The man in Newmarket is a neighbor and acquaintance of mine and a capable actor who played the part I wrote for him. Dinesh Mukherjee has never been particularly well disposed towards you, so he was quite willing to help. As for the mark on your knee, you will surely recall that you tripped on a rope in Chandpal Ghat back in 1939. Well. We'll be all right again now. A novel I have written is being considered by a publisher. If he likes it enough, it will see me through the next few months. Yours, Shunilal. When Dr. Chanda came, Bipin Babu said, I'm fine. It all came back as soon as I got off the train at Rachi. A unique case, said Dr. Chanda. I shall certainly write about it in a medical journal. 
ओ यस द रीजन वाई आई सेंड फॉर यू सेट बिपिन बाबू इज दैट आई हैव अ पेन इन द हिप फ्रॉम अ फॉल आई हैड इन रांची इफ यू कूड प्रेस्क्राइब अ पेन किलर You were listening Bipin Choudhury's Lapse of Memory written by Satyajit Ray. In editing, storytelling and poster designing myself Mudhumanti. You can write about my presentation in comment box below. If you love then please like and share my initiative with your dear ones. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Keep showering love and support. We will catch up in the next video. Till then, bye.